Hello everyone, uh, this is Imraz Hussain. Uh, I am a software engineer of AppScot and I am the author and maintainer of Hugo Tuhatim. Today I am going to share my experience and the lesson I have learned during maintaining uh, Tuhatim. I will hope uh, this will help those uh, who are trying to build a new theme. So let's get started with a little background. Uh, Hugutuha theme is a general purpose portfolio theme. Currently it has 560 plus GitHub star, 380 plus fork and 75 plus contributors. It is available 14 different uh, languages. Uh, initially, I had built this theme uh, for my own portfolio. Then I have shared uh, shared the theme with the community. When the theme got popular, uh, I have get started to get feature request from uh, from the community. Uh, the pe uh, various people was uh, using the theme in different ways that I had not planned initially. So in order to accommodate their uh, needs, I had to keep changing the theme. Uh, theme. Obviously, uh, changing something uh, that has been using by hundreds of users uh, without breaking anything is really hard. Uh, over the time, I have learned what uh, things works and what does not, uh, who, is config who is configuration uh, can be extended easily and who is cannot. Today I will try to uh, share those things. Uh, the first lesson I have learned is to be flexible on how the uh, theme will be used. Uh, for example, a portfolio theme may have a beautiful uh, blogging feature. Some user may want to use uh, only that feature. They don't want to use the portfolio part. So uh, let them uh, disable the portfolio section and use them uh, as a standalone blogging theme uh, using some sort of uh, configuration file. The second thing I have learned uh, is that we should not expect a perfect environment or uh, configuration. For example, for a portfolio theme, uh, you may expect user will provide a, a profile picture. Uh, if you build your uh, theme around this expectation, uh, now, if the user does not provide the profile picture mistakenly or uh, provide a point to a file that does not exist, uh, your theme might break. Your theme should tolerate this kind of mistake and provide a meaningful feedback to the user. The feedback could be visually or uh, via log. Visual indication is better because uh, uh, most of your user uh, might be uh, not uh, expert in uh, Hogo's. Uh, they are or new to Hogo. Uh, they might have hard time, uh, hard time finding the issue from the log. So it is better if you can provide a visual feedback for the issue. Then, uh, we should not assume that all the uh, user uh, will be a similar level, will be in similar level. Some of, if, some of your user will, ha, uh, will be new to the Hogo uh, and they don't have a proper understanding of how, how does it work. Uh, uh, you should have a 
pre-configure uh, example site that they can fork and can get started quickly. Uh, this will hugely reduce the number of issues they face. Uh, you will see another types of user uh, who are already familiar with Hugo. They are they are probably using a different theme and now they want to transition to your theme. You should have a proper uh, docu uh, guideline uh, for these types of user uh, 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 explaining what thing they should be careful about uh, during this transition. If you share your theme with the community, one of the most important thing, thing is to make it customizable and extensible. User uh, should be able to add a new section page without uh, requiring forking the theme. It will be great uh, if user can uh, change the color scheme without uh, uh, modifying that theme itself. Uh, you should have a uh, proper documentation showcasing how to do, how to add a new section or add a page or changes some CSS, some look and feel. Another important feature is supporting multiple languages. I find this feature a little bit tricky too. Uh, you will require a major refactoring of your theme to support multiple languages if you haven't uh, planned for it initially. Uh, here are a few suggestions from my own experiences. Uh, for a data-driven theme like a portfolio theme where Lots of uh, input are necessary from the user. Uh, using data templates will help a lot. Uh, you should separate those uh, different types of uh, input in a different data files. Then put those data file into a language specific folders. Now, if an user want to uh, add a uh, want to add a new uh, new languages, he can just provide a translation uh, for the respective data file in a new uh, language specific folder. This will greatly reduce the complexity how multi-language uh, uh, translation is handled for these data files. I also find it useful using uh, data templates for menus instead of using uh, Hugo's own menu templates. This makes uh, translating those menu slots more easier. Same thing is true uh, for footer or any language dependent metadata. Another thing I have learned from my experience is that word by word translation really does not work. Different languages has different uh, different sentence structure. Uh, word order might vary from language to languages. So in that case, instead of uh, taking individual part as an input, try to take the whole sentence as a user input. If uh, user input is not possible then instead of trying uh, to translate the sentence from individual word try to translate the whole word at a time if you are not a professional web developer like me then uh, it will better to avoid custom CSS. Instead, use a CSS framework like Tailwind or Bootstrap. Uh, this will, uh, it will be better if you can follow a design system. This will, uh, this will help to keep the new changes or feature consistent with the theme. Thus, framework CSS framework will take care of the responsi uh, responsiveness. 
it will also make uh, easier for the contributor to co contribute a new feature uh, there are a couple of times uh, when i have find myself working on a third party pr on a contributor pr uh, to make it consistent uh, with the theme Hugo provides a few great internal templates. They let you get started with a feature very quickly. However, uh, eventually people will ask uh, for the alternative. So it is better to build your theme, keeping this in mind. For example, uh, Hugo provides an internal template for adding a co adding comment support uh, adding discuss comment support uh, you can easily add the internal template and user can uh, start using this feature by adding a uh, field in their config file however over time user will ask for the other alternatives like belain e to rank discuss or comment so Instead of uh, using the default template, uh, I will recommend to introducing a new section under param uh, for the comment. Keep a uh, boolean field for enabling disabling the feature. Then uh, add fields for the individual comments provider. Then under the individual provider, you can put the provider specific configuration there. Now your uh, your comment your comment feature will be much more flexible in future you can easily add a new uh, comment provider or uh, change any configuration or add any extra configuration for existing provider same thing uh, goes for analytics uh, hugo provide a great template uh, great internal template for google analytics however people will eventually ask for the uh, uh, various other open source uh, open source analytic tools like counter dev or got counters so uh, similarly to comment similar to the comment feature introduce a new section in the param uh, for the analytics every now and then uh, people will ask the question like how to do this thing or uh, how to solve this issue uh, instead of uh, answering them individually uh, write a documentation and point them to the documentation different people will ask the same question in the future again and again so writing documentation will save lots of your time in fact, a good documentation can greatly reduce number of issue you see uh, in your GitHub repo. One thing I have learned in the hard way that never, never merge anything without proper testing. No matter how innocent a peer looks or how small the peer is, uh, at first, uh, ha test the PR against a list a checklist, a test checklist. Make sure it uh, it does not break the responsiveness, it does not break the backward compatibility, and it does look uh, it does look consistent with the rest of the team. There are few some few times when uh, I have. Uh, I have found some PR that changes a single line. The PR look, uh, the change look to me very obvious and uh, uh, looked harmless to me. So I merged it without testing, only to later discover that there is big someone's uh, side. Then I had to revert the change or fix those issue. So never. Uh, merge anything without proper testing 
finally one of the most amazing thing about open source project is how uh, how much the contributor can help you will be amazed the amount of words contributed by the community so make it easy to contribute to your theme have a proper guidance have a proper guidance showing how to change something how to test it then how to contribute to your team be kind and uh, be kind polite and open to suggestion give proper feedback to your contributors uh, they can learn from you and you can learn from them this way you can grow your team beyond your expectation so that was all from my side for now thank you for joining thank you hugu conference.io uh, for organizing this amazing uh, conference and giving us opportunity to talk to talk if you have any uh, further feedback or any question you can reach me at twitter or uh, send me email at the provided address thank you thank you bye